last book Leo Tolstoy wrote was not an epic novel of the likes of his notorious War and Peace or Anna Karenina, but rather profound considerations on the essence of art itself. In this small gem entitled What is Art, he exposes a rather simple yet profoundly significant idea. After discrediting all aesthetic theories that predated him, including Kant, Baumgarten, Hegel and Schopenhauer, for, as he successfully explained, attempting to define beauty rather than art, and after dispensing of most of the art of his time for being too artificial, too cerebral, and, although technically brilliant, devoid of any emotion and any real significance, the author finally synthesizes his own views. Rather, what Tolstoy sustains is that what all good art has in common is simply the communication of profound and significant emotions. In whichever artistic field, artistic creation is not defined by its beauty, although it might be a condition of it, but instead by the conveying of a depth of feeling. Highly selective, Tolstoy announces his good literary examples, the infamous Les Miserables or A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, dismissing his own creations as part of the equation. In music, he speaks of the works of Bach or Chopin, and in painting he references the creations of Jules Breton or Jean-Francois Millet, which are most of the artworks being shown in the slideshow thus far. Associated to this specific idea of emotion, there are, as he further elaborates, two main principles, the idea of infectiousness and that of universality. Greatly interdependent, almost functioning like two sides of the same coin, these two principles compose the cornerstones of art itself. The first, infectiousness or contagiousness, is the ability to transmit and provoke the same feelings and emotions as those originally felt by the artist in the viewer. Thus, Tolstoy enhances degrees of infectiousness, levels of communication, separate good art from excellent art. The second, the idea of universality relates to the ability of the feeling being felt by more than one person. In doing so, it creates a sense of unity between people. It, if it is not successful in this, if it doesn't provoke that feeling of joy, understanding or spiritual unity universally, then it is not art. A great work of art thus is successful in creating content and narratives that infects across cultures, languages and times, destroying the sense of separation between men and promoting a unity between hearts and souls. <laughs>